All sorts of things happen, you get to go to different places. And if I say one thing today, so I better get this in there before the Green Brothers start talking and I never say another word. <laughs> if there's one thing, if you're thinking about making science videos, and you, but you're thinking, oh, maybe they won't be or it won't be interesting, maybe I should do something a bit more exciting. There's nothing more exciting than making science videos. And I've travelled all over the world, like, to all sorts of amazing places because of that. And science is a really international thing. And if you are a part of it, whether it's as a scientist or just by making videos about the scientists, you become, you become part of something very international and that's very exciting. <laughs> the, the two most recent channels I've started is one called Number Vile, which is about numbers, and one called Deep Sky Videos, which is about space. And again, you get, you get to go to some interesting places. Like on the right there, I, I got to go to a train station. But on the left there, I also got to go to a really exotic <coughs> That's the top of a volcano with a telescopes in the power. So again, it's really exciting, but also like really educational. I like to think these things can make a difference, and that's part of, I think that's a big part of what all of us are trying to do. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a school there on the right in New York State where they watch periodic videos at the start of every lesson, and that was really exciting to sit in the back of the class and realise that you know, real human beings are watching these videos, and sometimes you get that, you see a few counter, these are real people. And you get sort of fan mail, at the top there, there's a fan mail, coming, a piece of fan mail coming into Professor Polly above. And you get all these comments which I think are, are really exciting things and make it, make it really worthwhile. More than any number, more than seeing thousands of views or likes and things like that, seeing comments where people say things like that, which I can't read because of, because of your head. Can you read that for me? Yeah. <laughs> I visit the website every day, I must watch every video at least twice and I learn something new each time. It's fascinating videos that both inspire and entertain me. And these people, you know, go on to become chemists and things like that. And to think that you're playing a small role in that is really exciting. This is Eddie from Arkansas, and Eddie's mum wrote to us that they, they haven't got a lot of money and they didn't really know what to get Eddie for Christmas, but he really loves periodic videos. So um, we got all the scientists to, who are in the videos to sign a picture of themselves. And this is Eddie actually on Christmas morning about to open his present, and then next we see him opening the present and seeing that. <laughs> Amazing, and, and it shows how much the world we live in has changed. Where a young boy in Arkansas can be really happy on Christmas morning to receive a photograph signed by just research scientists. <laughs> 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 My brother and I started making videos in 2007, uh, and every once in a while we'd sort of throw in one that we thought was not just entertaining, but informational. Um, and what we realized pretty quick when we did our first series of, of videos about, um, like trying to, uh, we did a pro like, like an intro to probability and French Revolution and red blood cells and circulatory system stuff. And it was very clear immediately that they were much harder than the videos that we generally did, uh, both in terms of writing them and in terms of like creating the visuals to make it uh, like to help explain more complicated ideas, and um, and in terms of telling the, what you want to tell in a short amount of time. And we sort of had a time limit on our videos, so um, it became clear to us that we loved that and that. that uh, with with what we can do, because we've, we've gained a fairly large YouTube audience, it, it was like, what do we want to do with this? Um, you know, we don't have to do anything, we can keep doing what we're doing, but what, what would be great if we, could, if we could grow? And YouTube actually wrote to us and, and they were like, we're doing a thing. And <laughs> pitch us an idea and maybe we'll give you money to do it. And, um, and so we, we tossed around a lot of ideas that were bad. Um, <laughs> And, uh, this is true, Hank really wanted to pitch a Pilates show. <laughs> I still think, like, like, workouts for skinny guys would be a really good... I just think it's another tap market, like, it's like, who's weight? And it's like, but, I don't wanna, I just wanna look, look like I'm not this. <laughs> No, I don't, I don't want to be the, the fattest skinny guy in the world. Like with the, no muscles, but lots of, you know, it's like, oh, you weigh 160 pounds. Yeah, it's all fat. Um, but I still think it's a good idea. But I can tell because you're pitching it to an EDU 
But um, we, uh, we, we, we sat there, we actually wrote back to YouTube and we were like, what would you like us to pitch? And you're like, what you're good at. And you're like, ah. <laughs> and we realized that, you know, what, if we're gonna have these resources, like what I wanna do is to help make the world better and smarter and more interesting and more interested. Um, and so with that in mind, we took pitch two, the one that was like, I wanna do this, John, get off my face, you can pitch your thing. Um, real quick, just move past that. Which, which I, you know, I, I, I have all of these, uh, you know, idols that, who I, who made me want to, to learn and who made me want to, to do science. And some of them were authors and some of them were on-screen communicators like Carl Sagan and James Burke. And um, to, to sit, to think like, maybe I could do that for people um, was, I mean, it's just, how could I pass up an opportunity to do that? So, um, so I wanted to do SciShow, which is just like, let's talk about science, it's really interesting, it's fun, it matters, it changes the world every day, and, um, and it's extraordinarily exciting. Like, I, I feel like I read the science section in the newspapers, and, and, and like, every time I read something, I'm like, that's freaking amazing! Why isn't this on the front page? Why do we have all that other stuff? Why can't we just talk about science? All this other stuff is just like arguing and shooting at each other. <laughs> I guess that's important too. <laughs> and so, so that's, that was what I wanted to do, and we've been doing it for five or six months now, and it's been really great. Um, and uh, thanks everybody for watching. Hi, I'm, I'm John Green, and I'm Hank's brother, and the other, uh, the other show that we have is called Crash Course. Um, so they're, broadly speaking, kind of a couple, of, there are many ways of imagining education, but sort of two of the predominant ways. The first most predominant way is that education is something that happens to people between the ages of like six and 21, or if you go to grad school, maybe somewhat longer, and it occurs between, you know, 8.30 and 3 o'clock every day, except that you also have some homework. And, um, and often feels like a series of hurdles that you have to jump over, um, and no one quite understands why, these particular hurdles are the ones that you have to jump over, and no one really ever discuss, tells you why these hurdles are important, and you're just sitting there thinking, I wish that I could run this race without any hurdles. It would be so much faster and be so much easier. And I remember the first time I watched a Weinhardt video, the first words that I ever heard Vi say were, so you're me, and you're in math class, and you're bored. And from there, it goes to talking about really interesting mathematics that happen as a result of her doodles while being forward in math class. And that was really inspirational for us when we were thinking about, um, thinking about how to make a crash course, because we wanted to make something that was you know, genuinely educational, that could, that could help, that could, that could teach you a lot of the same approaches to the study of history. You know, I, I teach world history, and he teaches biology. That could, that could teach you the same approaches that, that you're going to learn in a university course about approaches to the study of history, approaches to the study of biology. And we'll teach you a lot of the same stuff that you're going to learn in an AP biology or AP world, world history class. Um, not all of it, obviously, they're 10 minute videos. Um, but, you know, that would be appropriate both for sharing in a classroom um, as a way of sparking discussion, starting, you know, starting a discussion of the topic, and as, and as but, but mostly for, for people who just want to learn. And the, the astonishing thing to me is that there is this assumption uh, that people don't want to learn, that what people want to do with their so-called free time is sit and stare at a wall and be like deeply disengaged. But that's not my experience of being a human being at all. My experience of being a human being is that, you know, certainly not all the time. I spend a fair amount of time playing Bejeweled, but like... <laughs> every day, I think most of us have a moment where we're like, Oh my god, I have consciousness. <laughs> I should do something with this. <laughs> and we wanted these videos to be an entertaining, uh, but, but deeply engaging way to make it possible to have that, that more engaged life. And I mean, one of the reasons that I'm so proud to be on the, the panel with these guys is that every single one of these people 
do, does that and is committed to it, we all have very different approaches to it. We all have very different ways of doing it. And one of the things I love about educational content on YouTube is that it's not one thing. Um, you know, it doesn't all look the same. It doesn't all feel like a curriculum. It, it feels scattershot and, and messy and beautiful in the way that that's, but that's what real education is in my experience. You know, real education is, is picking stuff up from many different sources and, and building, we were just at this conference where someone talked about building an intellectual ecosystem, um, which is, I, I know that's like tremendously cheesy, but it's so true that like, the more you, <coughs> The more you study, the more broadly you study, the more videos I watch of Henry's, even though I, I failed, literally failed physics, um, to keep my C student status on the academic decathlon team. It was an intentional fail, but, but still. Um, but, 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 you know, the more I watch Henry's videos, the more I'm making connections, not just to the, not just to the physical world around me and the, and the way that it works, or to the way that the universe is constructed, but the more I'm making connections to you know, things that might appear in my novels. And you know, one of the central themes of my new novel, The Fault in Our Stars, was said to me word for word by, by Vi, although I think that she might, n might not believe it, but she said it, um, when, she, when she said that um, sometimes it seems like the universe uh, wants to be observed. And you know, that's something, that's something that she, you know, she was saying from a very different perspective and I ended up writing about it. But to me, that, that's the magic of educational content on YouTube is that it's so interconnected. It's not just, it's not, it's not about disciplines um, and it's not about media and it's not about approaches because we can be post all of that stuff. We don't have to worry about that stuff the way that, um, that people did until very recently. So that's why I'm excited about Crash Course and we're going to learn to be on this panel. Thanks.